Can I? Therefore, if you're affirming really distinct realities that are good, you're affirming a composite good, and a composite good, a good that is composed of parts, a composition necessarily implies a composer. Which we would mean we, that God we, we is we, composed. Muslims, we don't believe in a composite. We don't believe that our God is made of parts. There's an issue here where you're we are associating the term attributes with the term parts. Attributes yeah. and parts do not necessarily. So, so if you're talking about attributes as formalities, they wouldn't be really distinct. They wouldn't what? Be really distinct. But when you're talking about, for example, God having a hand or having yeah. feet, etc., yeah. and you're saying they're they're literal in some respect. No, I never said that. Well, I, I don't, I don't know your I claim, but I'm, I'm assuming. Well, assuming position, we just say bilake like, uh, that we, we don't ask the nature of how these things yeah. are or what they are. We're not literally affirming whether they're physical, whether yeah. they're not. So, well, if you can't, if we're you saying we're saying that the attributes, we, we do not, we, we say they are not wholly separate to the essence. We're not saying they're wholly part. They're wholly the essence. So, what is essence? When you're talking about the essence of God, what yeah. would that be? So that we, that's like that in Islam. So that's, there's attributes that's the associated with the essence, like you mentioned the hand. Yeah. And then you also visit the face of Allah SWT. But Yeah, that would be yeah. a problem because you're affirming two distinct realities that are God. Whether or not you affirm them as material or not, but they can be they can be divine, but they're still two distinct realities that are God. Do, do you, would you say with um so with Orient or Orthodox, do you affirm some type of divine simplicity? Yes. You do affirm some type yeah. of divine simplicity. Okay. Of course. With divine simplicity, you're basically saying that God's love is yeah. God's anger. In, is it the, we're we're it affirming a the, we're affirming a formal distinction in how they're applied to other things, but yeah. they're really the same, yes. Okay, so they're really the same. So God's love is God's anger. So God's wrath would just be a display of his justice, okay. right? So that would still be love. Okay. So the issue here is when you're we can wrap up the conversation quick because I don't wanna yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't wanna keep you too long. But when the issue is when you are doing that and we as Muslims, Sunni Muslims, I, I'm Sunni. So we, the reason we can't take divine simplicity from an Islamic position, I'm not sure if you're aware yeah, why. Yeah. We have distinct names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in the Quran. Yeah. We have like Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Al Hay, Al Qayyum. Yeah. So to say that all of these names and that all of these attributes are the same, yeah. that is that is inconsistent from a Muslim position because they are clearly being distinguished in the Quran. How do you affirm a composition? So I'm just mentioning I mean, the reason. The reason that we don't believe. Um, yeah, sure, there have been people from the Islamic tradition that have affirmed divine simplicity yeah. from the Islamic tradition. So, for example, the philosophers, yeah. the philosophers, the um, Mu'tazilites, yeah. and the Shia also yeah. affirm some type of divine simplicity. But the reason that we, there's plenty of reasons. First of all, I mentioned from the Quran and from the yeah. Sunnah, we have distinct names and attributes of Allah Subhanahu yeah. Wa Taala. Another reason you can give, for example, is if you affirm that God's love and God's anger are the same thing. Does God have? Do I have the ability to give? Um, can I give a loving action to you, or I can be loving towards you, and I can also be angry towards you, right? Yeah. I have the free will to choose between being loving. Yeah, and being but this angry. is you as a human. Yeah, yeah, right? sure. So I have free will, right? Yeah. I have free will to be angry or to be loving towards you. Uh huh. With if you're affirming divine simplicity, yeah. If God's love is God's anger, yeah. He doesn't have free will. You are limiting your concept of God that to not follow. having free will. Because if God is, can God be loving and not angry towards you? That doesn't you? follow. Can Absolutely. God be loving and not angry towards you? Sure. But then God's love is God's anger. No, that doesn't follow. Why not? Why not? Again, because there's a formal distinction between these things and how they are we receive them, right? So if we're talking about energies and how we receive stuff, yeah. that would be according to us, not according to God's energy, right? God's energy would be the same, but applicable differently to different situations. For example, if you sin, for example, sure. God will be just and he will have wrath for you. But that's out of his love for you, again. Because yeah. he loves you, he treats you firmly. But can he choose, and this is to, the same can he thing, choose but to just selectively apply his wrath and not his anger? And, and not his um, love, sorry. This, uh, his application of his wrath is his application of love. He cannot, he cannot, he is all loving yeah. by definition. So he cannot cease to love you. It's impossible. When he's being wrathful, he is being loving in that wrath. That wrath is just how you've received it because you are a sinner. 
I'm not, I'm not obviously yeah, I'm not no, running I understand, that. I understand, I understand. But so, for me, uh, we could, uh, I, mean, but, yeah, I know you mentioned you're not too comfortable talking about metaphysics, I'm not either. No, I so, don't mind metaphysics. Yeah. I don't like uh, essence energy. Essence energy, yes, yeah, so I won't dwell on so it too So I prefer long. triadology, sure, like sure, the sure. trinity. Sure, sure, so, for me, that's the reason because you also said that God, whenever He is applying His wrath, yeah. He has to simultaneously apply His anger. And oh, sorry, He has to simultaneously apply His love. Well, His wrath is His love. Yeah. Whereas we, as Sunni Muslims, we have a distinction between love, God's love and God's anger. And God has the free will to choose what He wants to do because He's God at the end of the day. He's not limited by having like. And is this, uh, is this free will divine temporal? Divine simplicity. It all comes back to. Um, Every action and every attribute is the same, right? So yeah. you can kind of go into a modal collapse as well, which is not what I'm not going really, to go into. Which is not sure. what I'm going to go into. Because if everything is the same, then the act of creation yeah. is also equivalent to his act of love. And yeah. then that also entails that God's creation is an eternal thing. No, so it creation doesn't. is eternal. No, it doesn't. Because again, we're affirming a formally essence energy distinction. This would be secondary intent. And secondary intent comes out of his love. But for example, if I can love everything eternally, I can yeah. still do something because I'm loving, right? So we can still have a, a eternal will without those things being actual. You can still have a, a eternal will and actions being actualized in temporal uh, space. But when, okay, so when God is I have a, loving, I have a question. So, yeah, sure, sure. How do you define composition? Composition is where if you take some, some the, Something that subsists on parts, right? And parts yeah. are where something can exist on its own, separate from the composite. That's not just. That's not the definition of a part. A part. A, a part, part. You can define in different no, no, ways. A, a in English part, language, you can define parts. Well, in many well but ways. the metaphysical definition of a part wouldn't be that it has self-subsistence. For example, you can have soul and body. Yeah, they I don't. don't, I don't the body doesn't have self-subsistence. But this is the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. If you're affirming distinct realities and things that are really distinct from the essence of God that still are on the under the... Um, but they're not wholly separate to God's But it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a, it's a, there's a real distinction and real non-identity between them. If you're affirming a real distinction and real non-identity between constituents of God, you're affirming a composite God. And, and, and further than that, the problem with the composite God is for anything to come into composition, it must be composed by something else. So then you're saying there's an uh, there's God is not the first cause and there's another cause before that. But you would have to affirm that under the metaphysical reality. Because I've I've gone through it. If you have, I'm not I'm not trying to be rude. No, 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 I just get. It's not my it's not my it's not my specialty. So I'm happy to. I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to learn. Hi, man. How are you? So if you're affirming distinct realities that make up one thing, that would no, no. We don't. We don't. When we say they don't make up, that's the thing. What does make up? Make up means like that. They're distinct parts that no, but, add to one thing, right? But you, again, they're distinct when something things. Is, when some, okay, okay. If some, if, if I say something is a part of you, yeah. and something is attributed to you, yeah. does something that, attribute, that is attributed to you no, always mean something is a part of you? Attributation is a different thing. For exactly. example, so no, the no, word attribute comes from the word attribution. So that's why parts and attributes are not exactly the same. It's no, no, but this is a different thing. For example, when you're saying there's non I, you don't say there's non-identity, for example, yeah. you don't say there's non-identity between sure. my skin and the color of my skin, right? The so color of my skin would be an attribute of my skin. There's yeah. a difference there. Yeah, yeah. My hand, there's yeah. non-identity between my hand and my foot. Yeah. That's a real non-identity there. And those are parts of my body. Sure. The same way, if you have non-identity and non and distinct, real distinction. Non-identity, non-identity and real distinction, right? Yep. So when you as an orthodox, when you believe the essence is separate from God's energy. Separate is wrong. Again, okay, we wait, affirm, okay, distinct. We, we, energy, we affirm a form, formal distinction. You affirm a formal distinction. Yep. You mentioned non-identity, so there's non-identity there. No, no, I, I, no, no. I was talking about if you're going to say parts, right? Yeah. That would be non-identity. Because that would be a real distinction between two things, right? We can still affirm to some extent that his essence is his energy. His energies are his essence, right? So you can affirm that his essence is his energy. His energies are his are his essence in relation to uh, to creation, how we receive. Them. But they're distinct things. So how they're formally them? distinct. This is what a formal distinction would be. It wouldn't be a real distinction. Always a formal distinction. A formal distinction. A, distinction. A, lot, distinct like, a lot of these, no disrespect, yeah. but like. 
I find like a lot of these just definitions in Christianity are applied only in Christianity. They don't really exist outside of the realm of Christianity. I'm not sure yeah. if this but, is one But of having, the having metaphysical like, terms that are only exist in Christianity doesn't make them incorrect, right? But it does. But it doesn't. I'm not necessarily saying that, but I'm saying like it's very, it just seems a bit like when you're inventing your own definitions for your own yeah. theology, it does seem a bit... Well, well, for example, we've, we've got 2,000 years of theology sure. doing this, right? Sure. You, you, you can't take that because, of course, for your good, for example, you're going to make, make up terms. There are terms in Islam that are not applicable in any other religion. Sure. Sure. But we're that's, talking about metaphysical like, you guys Again, that's yeah, that's yeah, but, but that's... You guys understand, you guys know what but, I say it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but we have these metaphysical terms because Platonism and Aristotle weren't even, like, yeah. they weren't even... They, were, they didn't even about one of these metaphysical terms. Yeah. So, like, for example, um, you mentioned about the Trinity, right? Yep. And the metaphysics around that. So, I mentioned this last week, and no worries if you're not familiar. So, so, uh, I'll watch the you watched the video, right? So, it kind of ties in with the terminology, because if Jesus was tempted to sin, and we all, all agree that Jesus was tempted to sin, I'm not saying he tempted. succumbed to the sin. I'm not saying he succumbed to the sin. Yeah. I'm simply saying he was tempted. Sin, and Tempt, it's very clear. Tempted means I mean, for example, if I if I throw, if, let's say you're really hungry, right? Sure. And I put food in front of you. I'm yeah. tempting you. Yeah, yeah. Whether, whether or not you actually feel the emotion of temptation, you might not even pay attention to it. It might not even cross your mind. But I am tempting you. Yeah. I am tempting you. You're not being tempted. I'm tempting you. Sure. And that's the difference. So this is the thing, right? So what was mentioned in that video was, um, and what you guys are mentioning to me now is an external temptation, right? Yeah. That I'm being externally yeah. tempted. Yeah, yeah. This definition of external temptation doesn't exist outside the Christian it, it tradition. Does. It doesn't. It does. It does. The way that you. I, I mean, I think I think everyone has used it like that. If I, if, if if for example, I I throw. He can he can tempt me to do something, but I. I won't um, have yeah, yeah. To. I can I yeah. can tempt I can tempt you oh come let's go to the club yeah. he has no no even thought of crossing his mind of going yeah. to the club I can be like oh, I'm gonna tempt you to go to the club that doesn't mean he's actually succumbing kind of to apart. temptation and I understand it's kind of hard to follow this so I don't want to like yeah, let yeah. me know if I'm struggling with it it's hard to keep up but like say if I tempt this wall to move towards us that wall cannot be tempted to move towards us because it doesn't have a capacity within itself to be yeah, but that's that's rational. just a falsehood yeah. the wall doesn't so have it's rationality it's, it's, irrational. For example, it's irrational for me to say okay. the wall I'm, I'm, it's okay. rational for me to say to you guys I tempted the wall to come let me let me ask you this well, yeah, I am the wall is let me ask you this right the wall is not irrational. let me ask you this can you be mean to a wall can I be mean to a wall yeah no. but can you mean be mean to a person does that mean that person has to receive that meanness? Does that mean that person has to receive that meanness? No. Okay, so again, you can, can't do no, something... Oh, okay, hold on. You sorry, can't sorry. do something to a wall, yeah. but you can do something to a person which they don't receive. So again, it's the same thing. I can be mean to Manuel behind his back. Sorry, sorry. He, yeah. he, will never, he will never hear of that. It, depend, it depends on the situation, again. right? So like, for example, if I'm mean towards you, yeah. and you don't receive it as being mean, but he does receive it as being mean, yeah. then there is a situation where I was mean to you, right? Yeah, but you can be mean to me. Like, you can, you can just say it to another person. Not even, I, I'm not even listening. You're still doing an action to me, right? No, no. Again, I'm, again, me, you're still doing an action to me, which is implausible to do to an irrational object, right? Yeah. And I am not receiving that action in any way, shape, or form. It does not change. Then, okay. Then so I'm the not same thing. You. Then I'm not tempting you to do that thing. No, no. So again. Then you're not being tempted to do. What yeah, I'm temptation doing. in this regard would just be to try and tempt someone to do something. Yeah, but okay. I'll just clarify my position and let me know, right? Yeah. If I'm saying anything wrong. I'm not trying to catch you guys out. I'm just yeah. trying to explain. Okay. If if I am to tempt someone to do something, yeah. they must have some capacity within them to be susceptible to that temp to the thing that they're being tempted to do. So if I'm tempting someone to sin, they must have something within themselves that has the ability to do that sin. Whether or not they do that sin As or whether they don't do that sin, no. that doesn't matter. They must have something within them that has the capacity to respond to what I'm tempting, tempting okay, them to do. So, so yeah, yeah but if we said there wasn't that capacity to do something, then we would be denying, denying free will, right? No, but no, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But, but the, the, the acceptance of free will of Christ is not saying that he's not perfect, right? He perfectly chooses with his free will to do perfect good. 
So this is not any kind of um, this is not any kind of thing. It's two different things. Sure. You're saying free will, yeah. and then you're saying perfection. If you're going to mix up free will and imperfection, then you're affirming that God's imperfect. No, I'm, I'm not criticizing the perfection. I'm not criticizing the perfection because he chose the right decision, right? Yeah. But the fact that he had a choice in the first place shows that he was tempted, right? Because he, to be tempted means you have a choice whether to succumb to the temptation or whether to not succumb to the yeah. temptation, right? If you have a capacity within yourself to succumb to the temptation, which you had, I, I yeah. get then that means he's not God. Because that doesn't make he sense. No, no, I get, I know, that doesn't I get, make sense. Because no, 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 again, hold on, hold on. Yeah. So, so you're saying there's a capacity to be tempted, yeah? yeah. That's just on the basis of free will. So, go, so hold on. You were just talking about free will. The capacity to be tempted to do the thing that no, no. is being proposed. It, again, temptation doesn't mean you have the capacity to be tempted. It means you have the capacity to do the things that you're being tempted yeah, yeah, exactly. to do, yeah, right? Exactly. You have so, the, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll, we'll do that. Repeat what you said slowly. You have the capacity to do the thing that you're being tempted to do, right? So if he, again, if he, hold on, hold on, hold yeah, on. Okay. Let well, me continue okay. on this. Okay, sure. If you have the capacity to do the thing, for example, go, uh, Christ is in a human body. Yeah. He has the capacity to go and punch John the Baptist. God forbid. God forbid. He has the capacity to do that. That is a possible thing he can do. Yeah, yeah. He chooses with his free will, which is perfect, being good, yeah. not to do that. Yeah. God, the same way, has the capacity to kill all humans on earth. That is not befitting his majesty nor his perfection, so he would never do it. However, he has the capacity to do that thing. And here's the point there. You have the capacity to do that thing that you're being t tempted to do. That does not mean that you're, not go you're going to do that, nor does that mean that uh, he's not good. Okay, thank you for that. So you said he had the capacity to do the thing that he was tempted to do. Yeah. He was being tempted by Satan yeah. to sin, right? Yeah. What sin is going against God's will. Yeah. So if he has the capacity to sin, he has the capacity to go against God's will. If he's God and he has the capacity to go against God's will, then he's not God. Again, so we're talking about physical capacity. For example, as I said, that's why I use the position of John the Baptist. We're not saying he has any other will to do anything else. That was the whole point there. He doesn't have a will to do anything else. He does not will to do anything but the perfect. But the point was he has the physical and mental capacity to complete this action. If he wills to do that, that's a whole other thing. He has the exact same will as good, as good so he would never do such a thing. No, but you just said he has the, he has a possibility to do that. So he possibility. Can't say never. Again, we're talking about a physical possibility. But, I mean, so, so you, for example, I can I can yeah. say you have a possibility yeah. to go and kick all these people in the park, right? Kick them in the head. You're never gonna do it. I mean, it's it's. Been working my tech on it, but <laughs> but even more so, you're ne you're never gonna you're never gonna do that because it's not your will, right? God's will, being so concrete and unchanging, it would never be Christ's will. But his physical body. There is the capacity there with a physical shape to do these sins. For example, I can walk off a cliff. That's a physical capacity. That's completely against my will. And even more so with God when his will is eternal and unchanging. So there's no real mental capacity that, that he's actually going to do that. Sure. But he is physically able to do that. Sure. The thing is, you affirm like hypostatic union, right? Yeah. So you affirm that the human nature and the divine nature no, are one. This, this is, that, so wrong, so or? we're from the Oriental Orthodox Church. Okay. We would affirm a composition of two natures, me, becoming one nature. That would be a uh, divino human nature, right? Anything, anything Christ would do in reality would also be his divine will to do that thing, right? Yeah, because that would be one principium course. So So when you're saying that you affirm one will, yeah. so when, when he has a capacity to do that thing, to go against God, God's will has a capacity to go against God's, God. And God's again, will has a capacity uh, to no, go no, against God's so, will. So, you, so again, you're misinterpreting yeah. mis, um, what I said. Sure. I said he has the physical capacity to do yeah. this. I said this is not his will, it never is his will, and he doesn't have the capacity insofar as mental capacity to do it, because he wouldn't go against his will. It's impossible. For God, his unchanging will, yeah. but he has his own physical body has a capacity to clench his fist, to do all these things. This is a capacity, a thing that is possible, right? Okay, okay. I feel like we've established yeah. both that point. But that wouldn't that wouldn't be against that wouldn't be meaning he can go against his will. No, we're not saying that. We're saying his body has a physical capacity to complete these actions.
And yeah, no, I mean, I, I need some help, guys. So but I really appreciate the conversation. Yeah, Thanks it was a good conversation. What was your name? Connor. Connor. Uh, Connor. Don't actually, never mind. No, 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 no,